Residents in a New York City are complaining about the sky poop. A diaper spa in New Hampshire is raising concerns. And San Mateo becomes the first county to, to declare loneliness as a health emergency. These are the weird stories for Thursday on Weird AF News, the only daily weird news podcast hosted by a comedian inside a closet for you, for you. Complaints about sky poop have residents and officials seeking answers. The story is out of New York. The city is called North Tonawanda. What a cool name for a city. Tonawanda. I really like that. Tonawanda, Tonawanda, Tonawanda. It's fun to say. Say it with me, guys. Three times fast. Tonawanda, Tonawanda, Tonawanda. We did it, guys. High five, somebody. Officials in the city of North Tonawanda and residents as well of one peaceful, quiet neighborhood are seeking answers to a strange and disgusting situation they've been dealing with for weeks. They, they call it sky poop. It's sky poop. Sky poop. It's fecal matter falling from the sky poop. For over a month, my goodness, over a month, sky poop? How do you deal? Get yourself an umbrella for the sky poop. Residents on Alice Street say they've dealt with several instances of fecal matter raining from the sky and hitting homes, hitting cars, hitting people's decks. We have one resident named Gwen. She told the media she's very concerned about letting her dogs out at certain times. She had to get a power washer to clean up the whole mess of the sky poop. Oh, I got the poo on me again. Gladys, Gladys, it's raining poo again. I told you get inside when it's raining poop, woman. Yo, listen. It says here, um, Gwen has gone to Facebook to post and complain about this because she's probably a boomer. She, she said, you got to be kidding me. This is the second time I was hit with the sky poop. Then a third time, my goodness. If poop lands on you from the sky, I think, you're, I think that means you're lucky, right? You should go buy a lottery ticket. They say when you get hit with bird poop that it's good luck. I don't know who came up with that. Somebody who was trying to stave off the embarrassment, he got pooped on when he was uh, playing softball with his friends. Like, aha, you got poop on you. He was like, no, no, guys, it means, it means I'm lucky. It, it does. Everybody knows that. When you, when you get pooped on, it means good luck. And then everybody's like, oh, oh, it does? Oh, I never heard that before. Well, you said it. It must be true. Let's just tell the world now. If you get crapped on from a bird, it's good luck. Okay, and then now we're all saying that, and yet it makes no sense at all. We have another quote from poor Gwen, who just can't walk her doggies because of the sky fecal matter. There's no comic relief. This shouldn't be happening. I contacted the mayor, and if I were the mayor of a city, airplanes are dumping their honey pot. This just shouldn't be happening. I want this to stop, and my neighbors want it to stop. Well, Gwen, I'm sorry to inform you, this isn't aircraft. <laughs> airplanes aren't dumping their waste over your backyard or your town. Some aircraft have a very closed septic system. I don't know if you guys are aware of this. It just doesn't just, they don't dump it while they're flying in the sky. All right. Now, not to say that there couldn't be a leak of some sort in the septic system. Boeing has been going through some issues lately about doors falling off. So perhaps there might have been a leak on a septic system, but for every plane flying overhead to have a leak, the chances of that are very slim, Gwen. I'm sorry to inform you. This is not aircraft. This is birds. This, it's it's got to be birds. It's most likely birds. I'm going to say it's birds. Birds that have an evil plot to only poop on stupid persons. <laughs> now, the city of North Tanawada actually sent out a wastewater technician to do some testing. According to the mayor, the city can't confirm whether it's human or animal waste. Why? Just do a test on it. You should easily be able to confirm whether this is human or animal waste, sir. The mayor, the mayor does say it's likely from an airplane because of its appearance. And that, no, mayor, come on, this is not airplane waste. Are you guys stupid? <laughs> what the hell's going on over there in North Tonawanda? It's aliens. I tell you, it's aliens. Says here it appears the droppings of fecal matter have ceased. Oh, thankfully. According to the residents, they haven't noticed any new instances within the past couple of weeks. But there have been storms recently, and residents tell us it's tough to know whether that's the case. Uh, Susan lives on Alice Street as well. Susan says, we'd like some answers here. We would like to know, is it human? Is it a bird? The chances of it being bird f for the flocks to fly off three times in that spot. You can see an airplane having it in there on their computers, and this is their drop spot. D drop spot! <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, airplanes would just have a drop spot of the septic system over certain towns. <laughs> Guys, where are we dropping this one? Back on North Tonawanda? Aye, aye, Captain. Here it goes. <laughs> so stupid. Wow. Americans are just the dumbest species on the planet, I tell you right now. Let's hear the FAA confirmed on Wednesday they're looking into the situation. <laughs> FAA, you don't need to look into the situation. It's birds, bro. It's birds. Why don't you have a better chance at getting to the bottom of this by contacting your local wildlife association in the area? I'm sure they could have answers to you on bird flights, migration flights, and they can confirm that this is bird. This is bird crap. Uh, now I have to wrap up the story. Should I sing a sky, the Sky Poop song again? That I just... <laughs> That's how immature I am. Just improving songs about sky poop. Um, here, instead, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pretend that the sky poop is a movie and Morgan Freeman is narrating it. For days, poop rained on her patio. Is that a good Morgan Freeman? Nah, it's not so good. A diaper spa is raising eyebrows and concerns in the state of New Hampshire. A debate over this new spa is brewing in southern New Hampshire with some residents in Atkinson taking a stand against this place called the Diaper Spa. Um, they're saying here it's a nursery-like business for adults who role-play as children and, yes, wear diapers. According to the website, the diaper spa is open to all diaper-wearing individuals who seek acceptance, respite, and care. Oh, yes, yes, yes. This is a fetish thing. I've covered this on the podcast before. It's, I believe it's called babification. Adults put on diapers and then crawl around on the rug, I think. And they go, I'm a baby. I'm a baby. <laughs> right? Isn't that what they do? I'm teething, so I need to hit the bourbon. If I go there, I'll tell you right now, I want to be breastfed by Big Mama. You know, there's probably a lady there named Big Mama and she breastfeeds everybody. I don't know. I'm just uh, making up jokes here and visualizing a scenario that probably isn't true. So let's read the article and find out what exactly is going on. It says, according to the website, this diaper spa is open to all diaper wearing individuals who seek acceptance and care. Photos on the spa's page show, show a space decorated with the soft comforts of a nursery, complete with toys, folded diapers, and even an adult sized crib. Dr. Colleen Ann Murphy is the owner of the spa. The spa and Dr. Murphy offer a range of services that include virtual play dates at $200 an hour, as well as a $1,500 all day diaper B and B experience that promises rejuvenating pampering quote for the little baby inside of you. Wow. This lady. Oh man. Murphy. Whew. She figured it out, man. What a scam. $1,500. All you got to provide is an adult sized crib and some diapers. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know, host, like a baby powder fight or a little tickle party for the adults. $1,500 a head. This is, wow. People pay this? Unbelievable. 200 an hour to go, to go wear a diaper. <laughs> Guys, you can come over to my house and I'll, I'll give you a diaper for 50 bucks. You could, uh, you could hang out in my closet for an hour. How about that? I'll even let you go, goo goo gaga, goo goo gaga on the podcast for 10 minutes, huh? How about that? 50 bucks, that's a pretty good deal. You come over, goo goo gaga in my closet, 50 bucks. I, I provide the diaper. I don't have a, an adult sized crib, but uh, you can lay on my futon. <laughs> wow. I'll tell you right now, though, guys, I'm not changing your dirty diaper. I'm not doing it. I'm not changing a dirty diaper on an adult. Unless, of course, you give me 1500 then I'll change. Yeah, I'll change your diaper. I will <laughs> I'll change your diaper and I'll I'll feed you applesauce out of, with, a, with a tiny spoon here, a little tiny spoon with a rubber coating so it doesn't hurt your mouth. Now, uh, services at the diaper spa include ABDL. That stands for adult baby diaper lover. Uh, all clients are required to wear adult diapers. Colleen says the spa and its services are non-sexual, do not cater to any fetishes, but instead are catered to individuals looking to regress and heal. Here's a quote from Colleen, the owner. 
it helps them process whatever trauma it was. A lot of times it's childhood trauma when they were in diapers or just getting out of diapers and they want to feel that safety that they had before that time. Well, maybe it works for some people to deal with childhood trauma to take a crap in an adult diaper while sucking on their thumb. I don't know. Who am I to judge? I didn't try this to deal with my childhood trauma. I just... I just deal with it the way every other Irish Catholic deals with it. I just push it down. I just push it way down and pretend it doesn't exist. <laughs> well, hey, man, any way to deal with your problems. People, you, people go to therapists for years and don't get anywhere. Try this. Who knows? Although I recommend just take a tab of acid. <laughs> I mean, I think you get far with a tab of acid, to be honest with you. Now, apparently, um, psychologists have studied this treatment. There was a 2020 article in the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health. The author speculated that several physiological and psychological factors could cause ABDL fantasies, including continence issues, childhood abuse, and the premature loss of a parent. ABDL behaviors could have different functions, including sexual gratifications or strategies to cope with negative mood states, they wrote in this scientific journal. And uh, it should be known, while sexuality plays a role in some ABDL cases, research that was published in the Journal of Sexual Medicine in 2017 concluded that adult baby role-playing in particular is more likely to be an interpersonal, non-sexual behavior, helping some adults decrease attachment anxieties and negative mood states. So, sounds like there's some science uh, backing up this approach to early infant trauma. Not all residents in the city are in favor of the spa, as you can imagine. A petition was started over the weekend to voice objections to its presence in the community. Here's a quote from the petition. As residents and patrons of this community, we feel compelled to voice our collective concern and dissatisfaction regarding potential incidents that pose a threat to the safety and well-being of our community members, particularly our children. We strongly ask a firm and continued rejection for this business to operate in our community. Someone else wrote, you can do what you want in your home, but a business, it's not right for the community. Someone else wrote, I'm sure there's a lot of kids that live around here. What type of people are going to go do that? People who are looking at children or being children by wearing diapers and being treated like a baby. That kind of concerns me. Who knows what that could lead to? Come on, man. This is a private business. I mean, what are you going to do? If people want to pay for the service, let them pay for the service. I assume they're not crawling on all fours on their way into the place, right? <laughs> like, I mean, probably no one would even know what was going on there unless it wasn't advertised. So I don't see what the big deal is. People do stranger things in the privacy of their own homes in your neighborhood. Stuff that's way more alarming than this. And and by the way, other businesses are, are more of a threat than this. When a Scientology center opens up in your community, where are all the petitions? <laughs> Scientology, trust me, can, can do a lot more damage to your community than this place. All right. But Jonesy, that's not a business. That's a church. Well, I hate to break the news to you guys. Church is business. <laughs> it's always been business. And like at the end of the day, is this any more strange than going to a psychic and attempting to speak to your dead parents to get over some of your trauma? Let's let's like compare it to something like that. Also a strange way to deal with past trauma, but people do that and no one's running the psychic out of town, you know, and, and you know, I don't know, I've never been to a psychic, but you know they seem like charlatans as well like this woman who's taking thousands of dollars from people to crawl around on her floor in diapers anyways maybe you disagree maybe you think that this shouldn't be a business that operates in a community at all i don't know. call the show 646-450-2012 <laughs> Hey, do you want to create a podcast? Well, Spotify's platform lets you easily make, record, distribute a podcast everywhere and even earn money. And it's all in one place and it's free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters. You can record, edit on your phone or your computer, send it to Spotify and everywhere podcasts are heard. They even have video podcasting options as well. Spotify for Podcasters allows you to earn money with ads and subscriptions too. Best of all, it's free. Try it. 
Download Spotify for podcasters or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your life, man. Yay! A county in California becomes the first to declare loneliness as a health emergency. San Mateo County, California, with a unanimous vote by the Board of Supervisors, San Mateo has become the first county in America to recognize loneliness as a public health emergency. Supervisor David Canepa said, We have 45% of the people who find themselves lonely, who suffer from loneliness. Well, if you know anything about San Mateo County, it's uh, kind of wealthy. This sounds to me like rich people problems. But let's keep reading. Maybe it's legit. Canepa um, introduced this resolution that he hopes will spur further action. He says, since the pandemic, county statistics have shown loneliness explode among the local population. Um, this trend, the country's Surgeon General says, is also being seen nationwide. Here's a quote from Dr. Vivek Murthy. This is a problem that has been building for decades in our country. COVID certainly worsened it and poured fuel on the loneliness fire. But that fire was burning and has been burning long before. In a letter to Governor Gavin Newsom, the county asked the governor to create a new minister of loneliness position for the state. A minister of loneliness. I could do this job totally. First off, everybody gets a free OnlyFans premium account. That'll... (laughs) That'll help you with your loneliness. Ah. (laughs) And if I'm elected minister of loneliness for the state of California, I promise a budget for diaper spas. Diaper spas everywhere. You can hang out with other adults in your poopy diaper. Suck your thumb and meet friends. Hang out with friends in your adult cribs. I will solve loneliness with diaper spas and OnlyFans accounts. That's how you do it. San Mateo County is taking the charge to tackle loneliness in the United States. They want to join other places such as Japan and the UK who have already taken steps to address this epidemic. Yeah, I think Japan and the UK are resorting to alcohol to uh, solve the loneliness epidemic, right? It's alcohol. Just get out there and uh, get to the bars, man. Sing karaoke. That's how you meet people and not be lonely. If approved, the Minister of Loneliness would work to enact policies to help improve not just loneliness, but also mental health in general among the public at large. I'm wondering, uh, can you apply for disability benefits if you're experiencing loneliness? If that's the case, I'm pretty lonely. I'm a guy in a closet recording podcasts right now. I mean, can you get any lonelier than this? Can you get any more pathetic than this? I'm wearing a diaper, so it makes me feel a little bit better. But, you know, this isn't easy, guys. And if elected minister of loneliness, I promise free ferrets for everybody. Don't you want a cute fairy little ferret you can keep in your pocket? How about that? You can get a few ferrets and sleep with them at night. You won't be lonely with your emotional support ferrets. Now, this has been going on for a while. Uh, People are blaming loneliness on social media that's uh, creating a situation of isolation because people are on social media and not interacting. Yeah, this has been going on. This clearly is happening. You know, we could sit here and blame it all on technology, but at the same time, technology opens up doors for us to to exit loneliness because it can link you up with people who are like-minded, people that want to do the same activities as you, people who are into the same hobbies as you, into the same sports, anything. Uh, you can use technology to get out there and, and uh, congregate with like-minded individuals. For instance, in my neighborhood, there is a Cincinnati Bengals bar. Now, I live in Los Angeles, California. It's pretty strange to have a Cincinnati Bengals bar in your neighborhood. I noticed it because in last year's Super Bowl, you know, the the bar was pretty crazy. Now, there's little situations like that everywhere. You just got to go online and find it. Or in my case, I drove by it. But you can go online and find these things. I believe in yesterday's episode or the day before, I alluded to... This website called Eventbrite, and there's others like that. I don't mean to push Eventbrite. In fact, I just made an event on Eventbrite, and their fees are ridiculous. If you're doing a, an event that charges tickets, like the amount that Eventbrite takes is just, it's criminal. It really is. I'm going to find an, an alternate ticketing event 
website for my next um, big comedy show that I'm doing. But anyways, Eventbrite has a free section, though. This is my point. You can go on there, and there's all kinds of free activities in your area or the major city that you live near. There's, like, free stuff that you can go to, free yoga classes, free pickleball meetups, 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 meetups. You know, book, uh, what is that, when they share books, people read books, book clubs, this kind of thing. So there are ways to extract yourself from the loneliness you know, I mean, unless you're a paraplegic and can't go nowhere, and then, you know, we got to tackle it with some other tactics. But in general, there are ways out of this using technologies. This is just my opinion and my suggestion. To me, it seems common sense, but I mean, uh, as you know, common sense isn't that common. And you know, people are going to want to throw a, a billion dollars at it to create some committee to solve a problem that's pretty, you know, has a very simple solutions that someone, even someone like me, a comedian in a closet can can help you with this. So, anyways, if, are you lonely? Email me. Yay! The loneliness of the long distance runner. I was trying to think of songs with the word loneliness in it. Do you have any? Call. Sing to me. Sing to me, my loyal weirdos. 646-450-2012. Want to give a big shout out and a thank you to Barbara Bigelow. Barbara Bigelow. Why, Jonesy? Why are you thinking Barbara? Uh, because Barbara, we call her Babs around here. Babs just became a member of the Patreon. So I want to show her some, some love for her, for her pledge of support. So shout out to Barbara Bigelow for joining the Patreon. So appreciative, Barbara. Thank you very much. Joining the Patreon is like buying Jonesy a cup of coffee every month. Isn't that lovely that someone would do that? Someone as nice as Barbara, of course, would do that. Barbara Bigelow, shout out to Barbara. Barbara. Please, Barbara, enjoy the extra content that's in the Patreon. Um, I've posted many things in there, and some other things are scheduled for every day for the rest of this week on the Patreon. So extra weird content is what you get as well. And you get that good feeling knowing that you're supporting a, um, a single lonely podcaster in a closet. Isn't that nice? That's a good feeling. If you guys want to join the Patreon like Barbara Bigelow, the OG, then uh, go to patreon.com slash weirdafnews or download the Patreon app on your phone. Just do a search for Weird AF News or go to my website, weirdafnews.com. Click on the Patreon banner on the homepage. There's also a link to the Patreon in the description of this podcast as well. Maybe you don't want to commit to the Patreon. You just want to buy Jonesy a, a couple cups of coffee. Well, click on the coffee cup on my website, weirdafnews.com, and you could just buy Jonesy a couple cups of coffee, which is pretty cool. Anyways, uh, today's Thursday, so you guys know tomorrow is the Friday episode of Weird AF News, and on the Friday episode, we only do weird news from Florida, so if you come across some weird Florida news, please don't hesitate for a moment to send it on over to old Jonesy. You can email me, funnyjones at gmail.com any sort of Florida articles, or you can slide them into my Instagram DMs at Funny Jones. So we'll try and do the best Florida Friday episode that we can. And I want to thank you for your time. Love you. Stay cool. Hey, Jonesy, it's Captain By here. I was listening to your show the other day, and you said you hadn't joined the Mile High Club, but you were looking for anyone who might be willing to take you there. Well, I haven't ever been on a plane before, but I've sailed the seven seas many, many times. And maybe I could help you join the High Seas Club. That's right. You heard my name. I'm not Captain Bly. I'm Captain By. So I might be able to take you into the captain's quarters and help you join the, the High Seas Club. Now, if you don't want to be there at sea level, I could take you up into the crow's nest, because that's tight quarters up there, sort of like the bathroom on the airplane high in the sky. So if you're ready to join the high seas club, John B, Captain Bai is here, and we can do that together if you want. So this is Captain Bai, sign off, John B. Shiver me timbers and blow me down. Hey, Google, hang up. La, 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 Elmo's world, Elmo's world. Hi, Jonesy, this is Elmo, your good buddy.
So much is called today to say to all the weirdos, how is everybody doing? Yay! No more hope. All of the weirdos be having a very good day and that everybody is having a very good time and being very happy. Jonesy, I called in today to say I'm having friends over. Of course, do I feed my goldfish is here every day, but I also have my friends, the Cookie Monster. Hi, Jonesy. And the Count. Hello, Jonesy. Ah, 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 ah. And, and Jonesy, I just want you to know that you said, what can we do to be happy? And they almost say, everyone should listen to Weird AF News with Jonesy, because that can make you very, very happy. Yes, listen to Jonesy every day for one, two, three new segments on his podcast. Ah, 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 ah. And on Florida Fridays, you get one, two, three, four crazy segments about Florida people in Florida. Ah, 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 ah. Yes, I like listening every day to my good friend Jonesy. Cookie Monster, what do you do to make you happy? Cookie Monster, eat cookies! Oh, that sounds like that's lots of fun. People, there's lots of kinds of things you can do to be happy. You can sing a song, la 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 la, la 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 la, Elmo's world. Or you can, you can have fun with a friend, maybe play, or go to the park. Or maybe you can visit someone in the hospital. There's lots of things you can do. But I think one of the best things is to listen to Jonesy. And I always like to say, good luck with your life. Oh, Cookie Monster say, I have to say man. So someone will try again. Good luck with your life, man. <laughs> 